Good morning, I'm Lindsay Janice coming to you live from Puerto Rico where we are awaiting Hurricane Irma. I want to tell you what this hurricane's been doing overnight first. It has been bearing down on the Caribbean island of St. Martin. People there are being told not to go outdoors under any circumstances. We have been speaking with Americans Holly Morris and Lauren Mayo. They're fitness bloggers on a health retreat there. They're in a six they're on the sixth floor of a villa. They're holed up there. They describe the sound of the howling winds like the sound of a freight train going through a building. They say the waves and the rain is so powerful, it's actually coming through the windows and flooding their rooms. So very scary situation there. We also have gotten some crazy pictures just in the last few minutes from St. Bart's cars floating in the street, the result of a massive storm surge. So. Hurricane Irma next is going to head to the U.S. and British Virgin Islands this afternoon, and then it's expected to arrive here in Puerto Rico later on this evening. We're already getting a little bit of wind here and some rain this morning, but the full effect is supposed to come just a little bit later on this evening. I want to bring in my colleague Josh Hoyos because he has been listening to the governor's press conferences. He's been speaking uh, to the people here every few hours yes, in yes. Spanish and you've been you've been translating for us and paying attention. So what did he say just this morning? So at this point we know that 700 people are now in over 150 shelters throughout the island of Puerto Rico, mainly north eastern portions of the island that were actually under an evacuation warning. Local media has been warning people that the sun that's barely coming out today and the relatively calm winds, albeit considered what we're about to see later tonight, should be a, not a, a point that makes Don't people be think. Don't yeah. be fooled by what's about to happen. By the end of the evening, the entire island will be seeing tropical storm forced winds. I mean, Irma will be 35 miles off this coast right here. It's incredibly startling to see an island that has not experienced a hurricane of this magnitude nearly 100 years. And he's warning anybody that lives near a beach now to, to, to go inland and... Everyone needs to move inland. If you live near a beach, you need to move. Anyone who's in a low-lying area needs to move. Anyone who could potentially be in danger at risk needs to move at this moment. This, it, this... It's too late to think that you could board up your home and sort of hunker down. Yeah, his press conferences have been nothing short of a little alarming. It, Meant, meant to get people to act. He has said things like the time to act is now. It could be a life or death decision. The time is running out to act. So people have been doing things like stocking up on water. Uh, we've been to grocery stores and yeah. seen empty shelves. People have been getting food, batteries, gasoline. We've been doing things ourselves uh, here at the hotel where we're staying, like filling up our bathtubs in case the power goes out so we've, so we've got some water, right? Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, yesterday we were doing a quick supply run and we stopped by at a, a Walmart that was entirely out of stock on water. They were barely in stock on bread. Um, certain food items were completely gone. I mean, basic essentials that people probably thought they didn't need to buy. They thought that this storm would stay off the coast and would not get to this island. It's here. That 24 hour mark yesterday, the governor said you have 24 hours, your decisions in the next 24 hours will be a matter of life and death that you've been reporting. I it's I interesting. Mean, we were it's in. It. This yeah. is, we, we've hit the 24-hour mark. The, the time is coming here. Just just in the next few hours, we're already we're already starting to see the wind. But we spoke to that shopkeeper in Old San Juan yeah. yesterday, and he told us that, you know, that people he didn't think were taking this very seriously, and his his shelves were full. So uh, yeah. so well, some of the locals the, weren't taking it seriously, but he yeah. said they were starting to come in and they were starting to really start to take it seriously. But this yeah. island has not seen. A major storm like this, a major hurricane, a Category 5 since 1928. 1928 so was the last time. So you can't blame people for being a little bit complacent. No, you can't. And this, the island has seen hurricanes come through the years. There have been a couple in, in many people on this island's lifetime. Nothing like a Category 5. Nothing with winds of 180 miles an hour with gusts of over 200. I mean, that's, it's sort of hard to even fathom that 35 miles off this beach you It'll know be that a we've category been category five storm we've been seeing sandbagging yeah. happening yeah. right behind yeah. you all they're making the sandbags this hotel has been all hands on deck for gosh what more than a day more here we have seen them carrying in furniture tying down everything loose trying to keep people off the beach there are a lot of tourists that are stranded here that couldn't get back to the u.s or wherever they were going so they're here to, to ride out the storm yeah. As well, and this hotel, by all accounts, uh, sounds like it's very prepared. They, they, yeah. there's a backup generator here. Power is a big concern. 
the country's yes. the director of, of the power company came out today. What yeah. did he, he, so he talked know, about vulnerability. Yeah, vulnerability is going to be key. At the moment, 90% of the island of subscribers to energy still have power. Sort of crazy that at this point, 10% of the nation is, is already lacking power. Right. We've only had wind at this point. Remote parts of the island may not see power for up to eight months. That's incredible. Parts of San Juan, parts of, of populated areas of Puerto Rico may lose power for up to a week. I mean, there is that firm belief that people need to be prepared for something catastrophic. And the governor also said today that most of the deaths that happen in hurricanes like this are the result of floods. So there's going to be storm surge, three to five feet, difficult to predict at this point. Yeah. But that storm surge together with the rain that's going to come down, we could see some life-threatening flash flooding. And the big concern, of course, not only for residents and tourists who are here, but it's also for emergency service workers. I mean, once winds hit 50 miles an hour, gusts of over 60. It's hard for them to get to people. They've essentially yeah. said that they will no longer rescue people. It's too dangerous. All right, we so. are going to keep you guys updated. We'll be here riding out the storm. We'll let you know uh, how Puerto Rico fares. Stay with ABC.